Hello there, thanks for watching and I appreciate you. This is a video in a series of videos showing you how to make a custom character controller that uses rigid body physics, sim machine cameras, Unity's new input system, and custom player gravity. In the last video, we released the project into the wild for anyone to download and announced our very own community Discord server. If you haven't snagged a copy of the project and its source yet, you can do that now. The link to download has been made available on the community Discord server. For more information, please watch the video upload just before this one. In this video, we're going to implement a method of moving our character along with a moving and or rotating platform. That may sound easy and like you can just skip this, but there's actually quite a bit more to it than you may think, so let's take a look at it together. But first, just a quick note, I forgot to mention this in the last video before I released the project. Before I released the project and packaged it all up, I did update our version of Unity and all of our packages. As of when this video is being recorded, we are now using the latest version of Unity, that is version 2021.3.5f1. And of note, the primary packages which we updated are our Sim Machine packages, we're now using version 2.8.6, as well as the input system, we're now using version 1.3.0. Alright, with that out of the way, we can jump right into this and close the package manager. So now that I've released the code with the basic character controller movement, this part of the character controller series is a little more advanced and not as refined. That said, I'm not going to sure code things as much anymore, and the code is going to get progressively sloppier. But things are going to be a little more fast paced, and we're going to cover a lot. At this point in the series, you should be very familiar with creating game objects, attaching scripts to them, and just basic Unity stuff. But as always, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the comments below, and or you can join our community Discord server, link is in the description below. Now with all that said, let's finally jump right into setup here. We're going to need a platform for our player to stand on, and we're going to make it rotate and move. So let's just take this platform right here, and we will duplicate it, put it in its own empty game object so we can keep things kind of organized, and then we're going to attach our script to it. Okay, so we have our platform here. Let's shift gears a little bit. We're going to create a new script in our miscellaneous scripts folder. And we're going to call it rotate and move. Let's go ahead and open it up. And you have to forgive me. I don't feel like typing all of this in, so I'm just going to copy and paste it. And we'll go over it in just a second. Here's our rotate and move script. I'm going to save it, and we're going to jump back over to Unity. Back in Unity, let's select our new platform and attach our rotate and move script to it. Also on our platform, we're going to need to add another box collider as well as a rigid body. Let's do that now. For our rigid body, we want to make sure that we uncheck use gravity and we want to set it to be a kinematic object. We are going to have two box colliders on this object. One's going to be for a trigger and one's going to be for the actual collider aspect of it. So on this new one, let's go ahead and let's check it as is trigger. We don't need a material for it. Now for this trigger area, we want it to be on top of the platform and slightly inside the edges because we don't want to touch the edges of the platform and move with it or rotate with it, right? So a simple solution to that is let's just take a trigger area and put it slightly inside and above the platform so that any other rigid body that is sitting on top of the platform within that area will trigger the script. We'll talk more about this in just a second when we go over the script, but for now, since our platform size is half a unit tall. Let's set our platform center to 0.55. Our size, again, we want it to be slightly smaller. So instead of one, let's set to 0 0.98. Our Y, it doesn't need to be very tall at all. Let's set to 0 0.02. And for our Z, we'll also set that to 0 0.98. You can see here in the scene panel what that kind of did, the green section. It's just slightly within the actual platform. That should work very well. And that's it for setup. So let's go ahead and let's do a play test now and we'll talk more about how this works and why it works that way. Okay, here we are in our game and you can see our platform is rotating and moving and it's doing it really, really well. If I go ahead and jump on the platform, you'll see that we will start rotating and moving along with it. There is no jitter or unpleasantness. It just does what it's supposed to do and it does it pretty well. Also, I want to point out that if we Go ahead and knock some other rigid bodies onto the platform. I gotta wait for the platform to come down here. If we knock some other rigid bodies onto the platform, you'll see that as many rigid bodies as I want will actually go ahead and move with the platform now. Pretty cool, you can have some fun with it. Oh yeah, it works pretty well. 
Anyway, to describe what's happening is when we step on the platform and that trigger area, if a rigid body enters that trigger area, we're getting added to a list of rigid bodies that are on the platform and we're just manually updating our position and our rotation relative to the actual platform itself. No, we are not using physics for this. We are actually just updating manually our rigid body position and rotation. But as you can see, it works pretty well and I've been happy with it so far. So let's stop this playtest and let's jump on over to the code and take a look at the script. Okay, so this script has a lot of different moving parts. I'm going to try to tackle it one thing at a time. And this really shouldn't all be in one script. This should be separated out. And this probably should just be implemented a different way altogether. But for learning purposes and for the sake of this series, this works pretty well. Anyway, at the very, very top here, as usual, of course, we have all our variables. I'm not going to go over them one by one. I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of this and I'm going to put it up in the corner of the screen right here. All right, so now we have those up there. Let's go ahead and let's talk about how we're actually moving our platform. It's a very simple way of moving it, but in our awake function, we're basically grabbing right away our rigid body's current position and we're calling that our start position. And then for our end position, we're taking our start position and adding three to both our X and our Y. Now we have both a start position and an end position for our platform. If we go down to our fix update loop, if move is enabled, then we're gonna take our platform position last frame equals our rigid body dot position which is just our current position. We're gonna create a time scale and we're gonna say equals our speed divided by the distance between our start position and our end position. Finally, we're going to move our actual rigid body by modifying its position and we're gonna lerp between our end position and our start position and our time variable is gonna be the result of our mathf.absolute time dot time times our time scale and then we want the remainder of our division by two and then we're gonna subtract one from that. That's a little scary complicated bit, but if you break that down and you research that just a little bit, you'll understand what exactly is happening there. But that's it. That's the magic little bit of code that's actually making our platform go up and back down again. I think it's pretty cool because this is one of the simplest and cleanest ways I could figure out to do this. So feel free to use this in your own projects. I think it's a very useful tool. So that's it for moving our platform. Now let's talk about rotating our platform. We'll just scroll up just a little bit here. And here we have if rotate enabled, we're going to modify our rigid body rotation. And all we're going to do here is we're going to pass in our pre-existing X and Z values. And all we're going to do here is we're going to modify it along our Y axis. And to do that, we're just going to take our rotation speed and times it by our time.fixed delta time. And then we're going to add that value to our Y. Now with the way that Unity works, especially in the fixed update game loop, you really don't need to multiply the time.fixed delta time here. But I did put it here because it makes it easier to deal with values since we're making a much smaller number in the end. And also it's important to have this value here if you're actually using this in the update loop because you want this to be frame rate independent. Of course, then you would not use time.fixed delta time. Instead, you just use time.delta time. Okay, let's keep moving. That's it for rotating our platform. Let's now move on to our triggers. We'll scroll down to those. Now in Unity, whenever you have a collider that is set as a trigger and it collides with another collider, then it's going to go ahead and it's going to call this on trigger enter function. It's going to pass in the other collider and we're going to call it other. By default, that's what Unity calls it. A lot of people usually change this, but I just left this default because whatever. Within this on trigger enter function, if not, the other attached rigid body equals a null. So we want to make sure that the other object has a rigid body. If not, then we're not going to do anything. Anyways, if not other attached rigid body equals null and not other dot attached rigid body is kinematic, then we want to make sure if not RBs on platform contains this rigid body. So we want to make sure it's not already on the list. We don't want to add it twice. And finally, if it's not already on the list, then we want to add it to the list. So we're adding it, rbs on platform dot add other dot attached rigid body. And then also we want to add it to our dictionary, rbs on platform and time. And we're going to add the rigid body and the timer we're going to set to 0.0f. And then very similarly, except this is when the collision is done or they're no longer colliding with each other. Unity has a function called on trigger exit. It's going to report the collider that's no longer colliding. And once again, we want to make sure that it has attached rigid body. If it has an attached rigid body, then we want to make sure that the list contains our rigid body. And if it does contain it, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove it from our list and our dictionary. Okay, so just remember here that we have both a list and a dictionary. Let's scroll up to the top and let's see what we're doing with all this. All right, here in fix update, we're rotating our rigid body. Yep, we've already gone over that. Next, we're checking to see if our RBs on platform dot count is not equal to our RBs on platform and time dot count. So we're comparing the number of items in our list and our dictionary to make sure they match up. 
If they don't match up, then we're going to clear our dictionary, and then we're going to restore our dictionary by adding all the items in our list back into our dictionary with a timer default of 1.0. Now you might be wondering, why is this here? What does it do? Is this really important? And honestly, in most cases, it's not that important. This is here mostly as debug code. It is a good catch just in case things get out of whack because triggers sometimes don't always work properly, I've noticed. So it's not a terrible idea to leave this code in here, even if it's not debug. But anyways, long story short, Uni stores data through XML serialization. Dictionaries are not serializable, but lists are. I'll throw in a bonus too. Arrays are also serializable. So therefore, when you're building a project or you make a change in your programming while you're running your game, then any data that you have stored in a dictionary gets cleared out. It's just going to be gone. It, Unity does not save it. Unity cannot save it. But all the data in your list will stay as long as your list is not static. So anyways, if this happens, if you make a change while you're testing your game, then this will restore your dictionary from the list and assume the timer is 1.0. All right, with that explained, let's keep moving. Next, we have our movement. We've already gone over that. And then here, finally, we're going to check to see how many rigid bodies we actually have on our platform. And for each one of those, we're going to increment our timer and also finally rotate and move them. Now, if you aren't already thoroughly confused as to why we have a timer, let me go ahead and explain the purpose of that timer and what it's for. You don't have to have the timer. The timer is completely optional. If you were to remove the timer, when you first jump onto the platform, you're just going to instantly snap to the rotation and movement of that platform. And it's not going to be a very smooth transition. So this is just a little bit of a refinement, having a timer that slowly transitions so for each rigid body, RB, we're going to call it in our RBs on platform list. We're going to try to pull up our dictionary equivalent of that rigid body in the list. And to do that, we're going to call RBs on platform at time dot try get value. We're going to pass in which rigid body we want and out we want to get the float and the timer value. If our timer is less than one, so we're counting from zero to one in this case, okay? If our timer is less than one, then we want to take our RBs on platform and time. Then we want to take our specific rigid body that's stored in our RBs on platform and time dictionary. And we're going to increase the time on it by our time dot delta time times a modifier of four. Now for consistency's sake, this actual time.delta time should actually be fixed delta time, but it doesn't matter. It's going to return the proper value anyway because Unity is smart enough to do that at this point. So I'm just going to ignore that for now. Let's keep going. Else if our timer is greater than one, then we want to make sure we set our timer to exactly one. The importance of this will be evident in just a second. And then finally, once we're done adjusting our timer, we can actually call our rotate and move RB on platform function. And to that function, we're passing in our current rigid body and our timer. Let's scroll down to our rotate and move rigid body on platform function. Here in the rotate and move RB on platform function, we're finally on the home stretch. If rotate enabled, then we're going to create a float called rotation amount. Our rotation amount is going to equal our rotation speed times our timer times our time dot delta time. Again, this should be fixed delta time, but again, Unity is smart enough to figure out that this should be fixed delta time and it's going to report the same value anyway. Next, we're creating a quaternion called local angle axis and we're using Unity's built in quaternion function called angle axis. We're passing the rotation amount and the rigid body transform up to our angle axis function. And basically what this function does is it takes a certain amount, which it assumes is a number of degrees, which is our rotation amount. And it feeds us back a quaternion rotation that is necessary to create this rotation amount on whichever axis you specify, which in this case, we specified our rigid body transform up. Now next, this can get a little confusing because we're dealing with two different rigid bodies here. We have our actual rotating and moving platforms rigid body, as well as our rigid body of the object that is on top of our platform. From now on, I'll refer to our B as rigid body on platform and our actual underscore rigid body variable I'll refer to as platform rigid body. So next we're taking our rigid body on platform dot position and we're going to modify it to match our actual platform position. To do that, we're taking our RB on platform position and subtracting from it our platform rigid body dot position. So we want the difference in position between our two rigid bodies and then we're going to multiply it by our local angle axis. So we're getting the position relative to each other. We're going to modify the position by a rotational value and then we're going to add to it our platform rigid body's current position. Next, we're creating another quaternion called global angle axis. We're once again using the built-in unity function called angle axis, and we're passing in the rotation amount. We're not just using our rigid body transform up for this though. Instead, we're taking our rigid body on platform dot transform dot inverse transform direction function to convert the global space of our rigid body platforms transform dot up to a local value relative to our RB on platform. And then we're going to create this rotational value based on the rigid body transform up. If you were to use the local angle axis for modifying the rotation value instead of creating this new global angle axis, then you'd get some weird things happening if the RB on platform was not positioned up. 
So for example, earlier when I knocked all those cubes onto the platform, if all those cubes did not land with their direction facing up, then they would be doing weird things. This solves that. And to actually apply this rotation, we're taking our RB on platform.rotation and multiplying it by our global angle axis. Finally, if move enabled, then we're taking our RB on platform position and we're adding to it our platform rigid body dot position minus our platform position last frame times our timer. And that's it, we made it through it. So let's go back because I didn't touch base on the timer like I said I would. So our timer before I mentioned, we have a min value of zero and a maximum value of one. And if the time is anywhere between zero and one, then we're gonna get a fractional value back. So we really don't want it to be more than one, but we want between zero and one. So like with our rotation speed here, we're multiplying it by a timer. Say for example, we're only half a second in, then we would only get half of our rotation speed. However, at a full second in, then we'd get our full rotation speed. And if we just started and our timer is actually zero, which never actually happens, then we would get no rotation whatsoever. So that's that in a nutshell. Hopefully all of this makes sense. Now there's one more thing I would like to have added to this, but I just didn't get to it. Maybe next time I will get to it. But in the meantime, let me jump back into a playtest and I'll show you what exactly I'm talking about and then what I would do to solve it. All right, the game is running real quick. I just want to adjust our rotation speed. This is not a permanent change. I just want to make it a high number to help exaggerate the issue so that you can see it more easily. So I'm just going to change the rotation speed to 200 for now. And you can see our platform is just going absolutely crazy now. If you look at the window towards the bottom of the screen, you see the actual game panel. And now if I go jump on the actual rotating platform, we all can get dizzy together. But if I jump off the platform, you see we just instantly stop moving. There's no physics involved whatsoever. I, that kind of bugs me a little bit. It's not a huge issue. It's obviously a lot more obvious the faster it's rotating or moving. But once again, let me show you. I'll jump back on the platform and then we'll jump back off it. And you can see we just instantly stop moving even though the platform's kind of throwing us. It doesn't really matter. It's specifically moving our position and rotation. There's no physics involved whatsoever. Again, when I jump on, you'll see we don't instantly accelerate when we land. We slowly do over about a quarter of a second. And then if we jump off, nothing. So as soon as we jump, just stop spinning. Not very realistic. And anyway, I'm going to stop the game now and we'll jump back over the code and we'll talk about how to solve that. Okay, here we are back in the code now. If we look at our on trigger exit function, you see that as soon as we exit, we just remove ourselves from the platform. Doesn't really matter. We just instantly remove and we're no longer moving along with the platform. That's what's causing this behavior that I'm not really too fond of. And to solve that, in my opinion, we already have half the solution necessary. We have a timer. So what I would do is instead of instantly removing it, let's start counting down the timer. And once the timer hits zero or below, then we remove the rigid body from both our list and our dictionary. So it's simple as that. I could have just thrown it in real quick. It was an afterthought. It didn't bug me until I started making this video as it always happens. So again, maybe next time we'll solve this, we'll make this better. But for now, if you want to go ahead and try to tackle that yourself, by all means, go for it. And with that, let's go ahead and let's talk about what we're going to do in the next video. In the next video, I'm not really sure what we're going to do just yet. We, I have quite a few topics. I might try to cram them all in one video. We'll see how it goes, but I hope to have that upload shortly. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. And again, we have a Discord server now. Links in the description. I hope to see you on there as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. If you're feeling generous, leave a comment down below. I want to read what you're thinking. Let me know if you have any questions or recommendations. I'd also appreciate it very much if you liked the video. And if you're feeling extra, extra generous, it'd blow my mind if you subscribe to the channel. Being new to this and putting these videos together takes a lot of time and effort. Thank you for any and all participation and support. I look forward to continuing this in the next one. See ya.